spend some quick time here going over a signpost again. Now remember, a signpost is what a sign does. A sign helps you know where you're going or tells you the route of something. So we look for signposts while we're reading. The first signpost we look for is something called contrasts and contradictions. And that's when a character not acting in a way that they normally should, not acting in a way that they have acted the rest of the story. That should tell you there's something going on and this is a part of the story you should pay attention to. Otherwise, you could either miss important things or start paying attention to things that just don't even matter at all. So, oh, that's a mess. It says, if we smell, don't chocolate, notice fur, hats, the purple sign. There's some, sorry, there's some useless words we need to cut out here. Um, signpost, old author. Uh, let's cut out chocolate. Purple, always get rid of purple. Signpost, old, if we smell, no. Um, smash, cats, these don't seem like reading words. Hulk. Um, road, I might leave though, because we're talking signpost. Candy, old, <laughs> old author. That's just mean. Uh, if we notice fur, no, fur hats. If we don't notice the signpost an author gives, ooh, 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 kids, we could, let's take kids out. We could end up off the road or ear, or no, or somewhere they meowed, or somewhere they didn't intend take up take over the world. No, let's take that out. Somewhere they didn't intend. All right. That's why we look for a signpost. Because if we don't notice the signpost an author puts in a story, we could end up off the road or someplace the author didn't intend us to be, focusing on the wrong things, missing important parts of the story. An author's not going, here's a sign, stop and read. But we, as readers, look for signposts. The first one we're going to look for is contrast and contradictions, and that's when an author or character doesn't act the way they we would expect. So I'm just going to show you two quick ones here. There will be a video check after this. Um, I believe this one is a movie clip from... Uh, oh, wait, that's not the clip I wanted. Let's go back. This is the clip I wanted. Come on now, it's bedtime. Did you brush your teeth? Let me smell. Let me smell. You did not. Put on your PG. Hold spirit. Okay, seriously. Seriously, this is too busy, bad advice. Fine. Right now, I'm not kidding around. So what I know about him from before this is that he is, you know, villainous, evil mastermind. And here I'm starting to wonder why isn't he just laying the complete smackdown on these kids? That should tell me something is happening with his character that we might not see it much yet. But we saw how, I mean, dude's trying to take over, take the moon. Um, and at this point he's letting kids like pop him in the face. And that tells us something's happening don't know what yet. It's called a contrast and contradiction when a character's not acting the way that an evil mastermind should or not acting the way he's shown us throughout the rest of the movie. Oh, we're not tired. Well, I am tired. Will you read us a bedtime story? No. That's what you'd expect him to do. Pretty please. The physical appearance of the please makes no difference. It is still no, so go to sleep. We That's can't. We're all hyper. And without a bedtime story, we'll just keep getting up and bugging you all night long. Oh, fine. So, all right. I don't think this is his character changing here. Like, he's still just doing it because they um, were going to make his life worse. I'm surprised he doesn't just pull out like a shrink ray and just shrink them in some way. I'm surprised on that. Um, let's see how the story goes. Does he act the way that we've seen the rest of the story? Does he act the way a villainous mastermind should? Sleepy kittens. Sleepy kittens. What are these? Puppets. You use them when you tell the story. Okay, let's get this over with. That's what you expect. Three little kittens love to play. They had fun in the sun all day. Then their mother came out and said, Time for kittens to go to bed. Wow, this 
is garbage. Do you actually like this? Keep reading. That's what you would expect from his character. Come on. All right, all right, all right. All right. Nothing weird here. Three too. little Good kittens story. started to bawl. Mommy, we're not tired at all. Their mother smiled and said with a purr, Fine, but at least you should brush your fur. Now you brush the fur. This is literature? <laughs> a two-year-old could have written this. Right. He's complaining about Three it. Three little kittens still doing it. with fur all brushed Doesn't said, like we can't sleep, yet, we feel too rushed. Their mother replied with a voice like silk. Fine, but at least you should drink your milk. Now make them drink the milk. Oh, I don't like this book. This is going on forever. Three little kittens with milk all gone rubbed their eyes and started to yawn. <sighs> we can't sleep. We can't even try. Then their mother sang a lullaby. Good night, kittens. Close your eyes. Sleep in peace until you rise. Though while you sleep, we are apart. Your mommy loves you with all her heart. This moment right here is what you call it. This is a signpost. Contrasts and contradictions. This is not how an evil, villainous mastermind who only took these kids in at first as part of his plan would be responding to the story. This tells us this is an important part of the story. Something's happening here. Pay attention to this part of the story, this character changing, or what, whatever is happening here. Signpost. Pay attention to this. The end. Okay. Good night. <laughs> Wait. What? What about good night kisses? Not yet. No, no, no. There will be no kissing or hugging or kissing. Once you notice, that's it's a quick like moment. He doesn't come back to kiss them. It's a I quick like moment him. in the story. Nice. That's scary. But it's the start of They're a change changing. for him. And if you, you know the rest of the movie, you know how much he eventually uh, just loves them and it completely changes his life. Um, but that is the start. That signpost there is the cue to pay attention. It really, in the, in that whole movie, was about 20 seconds. But noticing that part where he starts to act different, that's a signpost. We should pay attention to that. We need to ask ourselves, why is that character acting that way? All right. I do have one more great story for you. It's a heart jerker, and I don't know if I want to share it yet. I don't. I want to save it. It's good. And I got a feeling a lot of y'all aren't paying attention right now. The next one, it's so good. You will cry. You will cry. So you're going to break off to your small group text at this point. You have, um, actually, you got a video to do, a video check to do here pretty quick. But if you're paying attention to the movie, and to what we've been talking about here, you should be pretty solid. Knock that out of the park, get an A, and then move on to your small group stuff. Um, asynchronous until you see uh, Mr. Watson this afternoon at 125, and then you got Miss Smith. Thanks, y'all. Pay attention to the signposts.